All right, so let's get at it. So what we have is we have an equation in standard form. We want to write it in vertex form. So therefore, we can quickly graph it, because when it's in vertex form, we know the vertex. So we need to complete the square. And by completing the square, what we need to do is we need to write, we need to find a binomial squared. So to do that, we need to take b divided by 2 and square it. But before we can do that, we got to make sure that our coefficient of our x squared is equal to 1. And right now, it's not equal to 1. There's a negative 3 there. So I need to factor out the negative 3. Now, when I factor out the negative 3, I'm only going to factor it out of my first two terms, because those are the two terms that I only care about, because I want to complete this, complete the square. And I'll show you how, um, how we're still going to apply that. So take y, factor out a negative 3. So I'm left with x squared minus 4x plus 5. Okay. I have not changed the problem at all. All I did was I factored out a negative 3 of the first two terms, and then um, first two terms, and then kept the 5 on the outside. Now you can see I have an x squared with a 1 in front, and I have a b, right? Because the b is still your coefficient of your linear term. So now I can take b divided by 2 and square it. When I take negative 4 divided by 2, I get negative 2. Negative 2 squared is equal to 4. Okay. So now what I need to do is I'm going to take that value. I'm going to add it inside the parentheses. So it's going to look something like this. So I have y equals negative 3 times x squared minus 4x. Then I'm going to take the value, add 4. Now again, remember, this is an equation. So if I add something on one side, I have to add it onto the other side. Or since we, since we want to solve for y, I could add 4 on one side and subtract 4 on that side. So since I added it, I'm going to have to subtract it. Now, what's important about this, though, <coughs> is by taking b divided by 2 squared, I have now created a perfect square trinomial. And I, what's nice about a perfect square trinomial is it can be factored to a binomial squared, all right, which is a binomial times itself. So now, oh, I made the big mistake. I was thinking about doing it, but I was, ah. All right, um, not there yet. Sorry, I got a little ahead of myself. So please note, since I added 4 in here, I have to subtract negative 4 in here, right? Obviously. But be careful, because when I added the 4 inside the parentheses, that inside the parentheses is being multiplied by a negative 3. So when I subtract it outside the parentheses, I still need to multiply it by a negative 3. Very, very important. Um, and if you can quickly forget about it, so because I was going to try to trick, write something, and I even forgot about it. So be very, very careful with that. But now I can factor my binomial squared, y equals negative 3 times, um, in this case I have x minus 2 squared. Just go ahead and factor x squared minus 4x plus 4. You'll get x minus 2 times x minus 2, which we rewrite as x minus 2 squared. Um, negative 4 times negative 3 is a positive 12 plus 5 is going to be 17. Okay, So that is going to be my equation. Um, now we know that the vertex is at h comma k. So let's go ahead and write our new vertex. My new vertex is going to be at 2 comma 17. So let's go ahead and plot that somewhere. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. OK, now this gets a little tricky here. Because we know that when a is less than 1, my graph is going to open down. And when a is greater than 1, my graph opens up. So I know the end behavior of this graph is going to open down. However, when we look at the, at the parent graph, we know that the next two points are over 1, up 1, right? Or over 1, down 1, depending if it opens up or opens down. But here, my a has a factor of 3. So. <clears throat> Instead of going over 1, up 1, I'm going to have to go over 1, up 3. Well, in this case, since it's negative, I have to go over 1, down 3. 1, 2, 3. And over 1, down 3. 1, 2, 3. And then if I go over 2, I have to go down 6. Down 4. All right. Well, let's just go. And we could also just go ahead and check that um, by plugging in those values. So if you have, here's your equation, right? And we know that my line of symmetry is at 2. Well, then let's just pick a value. Let's just pick a value, not 2, because we know that's going to give us our vertex, which is 17. Let's pick a value um, to the left and to the right. Let's say we pick the value 1. OK? 
okay? Well, one minus two is negative one. Negative one squared is positive one. Positive one times negative three is going to be a negative three plus 17, which um, y equals 14, which is exactly as I stated, it'd be down three over 14. And then you can just keep on following that pattern as over two, down six, you're gonna keep on going. So my graph is gonna be very skinny and it's gonna look something like that. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how um, you do graph your equation by completing the square and writing it in vertex form. Thanks.